dreadful Irish weather for a summer's day in August. I could let it get me down or I could take a spin to a megalithic cemetery. Today I'm at Caramore Megalithic Cemetery in County Sligo and it's one of the largest Neolithic, megalithic cemeteries in the whole of Europe. And it's got loads and loads of different stone circles and forts and all sorts here. So I'll give you a little look around. Caramore sits in the heart of the Coolera Peninsula, surrounded by stunning landscapes. About 6,000 years ago, during the Neolithic era, this area was bustling with early farmers. These settlers, likely from northern France, were drawn to the fertile land and the imposing Nochnere mountain, home to Queen Maeve's legendary cairn. Caramore is one of four major passage tomb complexes in Ireland, alongside nearby Carrowkeel, Loch Crew and the Boyne Valley. Although some tombs have been lost over time, more than 30 still stand. The centrepiece is Tomb 51, also known as Listohill. What makes this tomb so special is its alignment with the sunrises on Samhain and Imbolc, marking the start of winter and spring. These ancient people weren't just farmers, they were early astronomers. Inside Listohill, archaeologists uncovered both cremated and uncremated remains. Among them was a man in his 50s who had been defleshed, a ritual where the flesh is removed from the bones. Now, this might sound eerie, but it was a significant practice also seen in Carrowkeel, another Sligo passage tomb site, where bodies were dismembered using sharp stone tools. Another intriguing find was a man in his 20s whose DNA analysis in 2019 revealed that he was a father of a man buried just two kilometres away at Primrose Grange on the slopes of Knock This connection shows how closely linked these communities were, even in death. Carbon dating shows that some of Caramore's satellite tombs are nearly 5,800 years old while this total dates to about 5,600 years ago. DNA evidence also links individuals buried at Caramore with those at other major sites like Newgrange and Millen Bay, suggesting that these tombs were the final resting places for an elite or royal lineage. I'm inside Liz Toher. Now this has been reconstructed, the outer part of it has been reconstructed to show what the cairn would have been like if it was fully exposed, but it would have actually been covered over completely by all of these stones originally. And inside there was this tomb, which still has the rock on top and it has some examples of rock art, Neolithic rock art on it. Um, but this would have been a very significant place. And actually this place here, this tohel, is aligned in such a way that if you're looking out at the mountains on Samhain or Imbolc, the sun rises perfectly in line with this site. So again, it has celestial significance and it indicates as well an understanding of religious significance and possibly of a belief in the afterlife. Now, let's zoom out a bit. The people who built these incredible tombs weren't originally from Ireland. Their ancestors began their journey in the Middle East about 10,000 years ago, where they were among the first to develop farming. Over thousands of years, they migrated across Europe, eventually reaching Ireland around 6,000 years ago. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Archaeologists discovered a tooth at this tohill, which underwent DNA testing. And these results showed a direct genetic link to individuals buried at other significant Neolithic sites like Newgrange, Carrickeel and Millen Bay in County Down. This suggests that these passage tombs weren't just isolated burial sites. They were the resting places of an interconnected royal lineage that spread all across Ireland. Now the myths surrounding this place suggest that 
and Kalia Vera came from Ovid Mountains. She has her house up on the mountains near here. And that this whole place was formed not by the Neolithic people, but by when she, of course, was dropping her rocks all over the land. So again, she would have had control over the weather and she has not graced me with good weather, weather today. Uh, she was a goddess. And of course, the East She would have loved this place. This is like a city for the She. There's places, hills and mountains everywhere. For them. But the Kalyuk's influence goes beyond mythology. She's also tied to Karamor's astronomical significance. Just in 2008, the Halloween sunrise alignment at Listohal was observed for the first time in modern memory. As the sun rises, a gable-shaped stone casts a long shadow inside the chamber, creating a spike of darkness that lasts about 10 minutes. The sunrise aligns perfectly with the natural sally saddle in the Baligali Mountains, six kilometres away. Over the winter, the sun travels across the horizon, crossing four hills, each topped with a cairn, before finally reaching the head of the Kalyach Vera. These hills are visualised in folklore as the reclining figure of the Kalyach, with her head to the right. When the sun reaches the Kalyach's head at the solstice, it marks the standstill of the sun. Afterwards, the sun begins its journey back across the horizon, returning to the saddle on February the 10th, aligning with Imbolc, the start of spring. It's almost as if the landscape itself was a giant clock with the Kalya overseeing the cycle of the seasons. I hope you can see behind me here the tomb that's the largest actually on the whole site here at Caramore. And it's just so interesting to me that that's on private land. I feel like these sites are so underappreciated that they're not even accessible to the public anymore. I just hope that in the future we will have greater value for monuments such as these and I'm just glad that it's still intact and even on a rainy day like today it still looks spectacular. Now on some of the monuments you can see that there are crows present. There was more here a minute ago. There, oh there they are, there's another one. Now this isn't insignificant. They're often seen as guardians to the other world or even harbingers of death or doom or prophecy of some kind. I'm going to enter this one. But first I'm going to ask for permission, just in case I don't want to upset the she. I place my hand on the rock. In the past, people had all sorts of theories about Karamor. Some thought the tombs were linked to the Fear Bullock warriors who fled after the Battle of Moitura. Others believed they were connected to the Connacht men who fought at the Battle of Sligo. But modern archaeology has shown us that these tombs are actually much older, dating back to before the time of the Egyptian pyramids to the Neolithic period, long before any of those battles ever happened. Caramore is more than just a collection of old stones. It's a living piece of Ireland's ancient past. A place where history, mythology and the natural world come together. It reminds us of the people who came before us and their deep connection to the land. So the next time you're in Sligo, take a trip out here. Who knows, you might even hear some fairy music if you're lucky. Or unlucky, depending on how you see it. So please share this video with your friends and join me on YouTube for lots more. Sligo Fall.